download and upload more than ever before with an ultra fast fiber connection. With three simple steps, you can be the one with an SLT fiber optic connection. Visit slt.lk. Mega Projects, PM begins besting 200 roads and bridges with the people. Taking a stance, opposition leader demands assurance on UNHRC accountability, requests government not to co-sponsor resolutions against Sri Lanka. New regulation, colour coding system on sweets to be made compulsory from next month. Red Alert. Med Department issues warning for five provinces, indicates threats from heavy rainfall and severe thunderstorms. All that and much more coming up on first at 9 this Sunday, the 17th of March, 2019. From Ada Derana, this is Ada Derana First at 9, live from Studio 24 in Colombo. A well, very good evening and welcome to First at Nine on Adadarana 24, Sri Lanka's news channel. I'm Katharina Chang. Now on to a top story tonight. Prime Minister Rana Vikram Singh today commenced investing of 200 road and bridges with the public. These projects had been completed at the Ran Mawat Road and Bridge Development Program with an investment of 3 billion rupees. Prime Minister Vikram Singh revealed the government's plan for a comprehensive national road development project that will not alter no matter which government comes into power. Prime Minister Ranil Vikramasinghe declared open three roads today under the Ran Mawat Road and Bridge Development Program. The public was vested with the Mavanella Gampula Road, Mavanella Rambukana Road, as well as the Aranayaka Horavella Road. <laughs> ಹಸಿಂಗ್ <laughs> <laughs> Meanwhile, the Maoya Bridge in Kochikade in Gampaha, which was constructed under the Ran Mawat program, was declared open by Prime Minister Vikrama Singha today as well. <laughs> Edar Rate Adam, Daladeshi and Ishpadin in Siet Ekodai. Adapi Siet Pahalo, Dasa, Dakwa Gintina. That Pedigranuna, Samare Vadikran Siduna, it Moka the currently. Tamanta Naya, given a berry tenor, Mokadi Sali, Amaru in Ariwagan, Tamangi Venat Mudal Dala, Ethanim Berenod, Natam Bankolo Kiela, Prakashakala, Tamangi Daruangan Agate, Natikon. American Ganatin Amarutin. Merate, Das Namsia Panahe, Dasakim Passe, Pratama Vata, Merate, Jangam Ginume, Atrikiati. Ape, Hapanane, GSP plus Labunisa, Dollar, Million, Dahanamada Hakatagi, Vadima Praman, Davas Panas de Kesidia Tibunetan, Tavat Sanjarakun. Ape, Videsha Ajane, Akajan one lit with a dollar, million at the Das Tunsi, men make a headline. Mama Kriakrami, Andu Kriakrani, Sandan Shanadala. President Maitri Palasi Sena returned to Sri Lanka this morning following a four-day official visit to Kenya to attend the fourth session of the UN Environment Assembly upon the invitation by his Kenyan counterpart Uhuru Kenyatta. Arriving at Kuliapitiya this afternoon, the head of state unveiled a statue of Lord Buddha at the Navakadasar Girivihara Temple in Ulubandava. 
Following his return to Sri Lanka after a four-day official visit in Kenya, President Maitripala Sirisena unveiled the Buddha statue at the Navakara Selgiri Vihara temple in Kuliapitiya this afternoon. Meet a mass a key peg at a pair, a may pilibando, Prakasia Kala, NGO, Willing, in a Sali Willin Tamai, Bixun, Sela, Pirisak Kita, Sulu, Pirisak, Ape Bauda Darshane, Pilibando, where the Pratariak, then the Kati to Gran Nigella. The mass a great calling, Bom Naraka Vida Unran Sela Mata, May Pilibando Unran Selake, Pratichare, Dakono, Igela Mata, then on the Makala, Villa Bahama, Sama Gana Gilamat. Mate Pilibando, then on the Makale, Bom Ugat Padagat Matmik. Mama ඒ මහත්මයාට කිව්වා මම නම් සමාව ගන්න එන්නේ නැහැ මම මේක රටේ ජනාධිපතිවරයා විදිහට වගේම බෞද්ධෙක් විදිහට ඒ කණ්ඩායම පිළිබඳව මම සෑම තැනම නිතර නිතර ඒ ගැන ප්‍රකාශ කරනවා මේ පිරිස කවුද කියලා හඳුන්වා දීම අවශ්‍ය නිසා කියලා Meanwhile Tripitaka Bivandana week declared to mark the occasion of initiating the process in order to declare the Theravada Tripitaka the sacred scripture of the Buddhists as a world heritage commenced yesterday the Tripitaka Vivandana week was declared from March 16th to March 23rd. The national ceremony to announce the proposal to declare the Theravada Tripitaka as a world heritage will be held under the patronage of Mahasangha of all three sectors, along with President Maitripala Sirisena at the Mahamaluva of the Temple of the Sacred Tooth Relic on the 23rd of March. Opposition leader Mahindra Rajapaksha called on the government to present a clear stance on Resolution 30-1 in Geneva, saying Sri Lanka will no longer co-sponsor resolutions against itself in the UNHRC. The opposition leader in a communique release today went on to say that the failure to do so will be a betrayal to the country. A communique by the opposition leader Mahinda Rajapaksa titled The Stand Sri Lanka Should Take in Geneva stated that by co-sponsoring Resolution 30-1, the Sri Lankan government officially accepts the Office of the High Commissioner on Human Rights report in 2015, which directly accuses the Sri Lankan armed forces of many crimes, including torture, enforced disappearances, deliberate targeting of civilians and the denial of humanitarian assistance to civilians. The communique went on to say that the contents of the UN when Human Rights Commissioner's latest report, in addition to similar reports in previous years, gives rise to the question whether Sri Lanka is any longer a sovereign nation and questioned the need for an elected government. The opposition leader further stated that Resolution 30-1, which sought to betray the country's armed forces and wartime leaders to interested foreign parties, was co-sponsored by the Yahapalana government at a time when they were expecting large inflows of foreign aid. The release further noted that despite five renowned international experts in the law of armed conflict, expressed views in favour of Sri Lanka are British citizens, yet the Sri Lankan government has not engaged with the British government to have the passage of these resolutions stopped. The communique went on to say that the delegation representing Sri Lanka should present a clear stance on the resolution 30-1 which states that Sri Lanka will no longer co-sponsor resolutions against itself in the UNHRC, that Sri Lanka does not accept the allegations made in OHCHR report number 30-61 of September 2015, that hybrid war crime courts with foreign judges and prosecutors will never be set up in Sri Lanka, that Acts number 14 of 2016, number 5 of 2018 and number 24 of 2018, which are highly detrimental to Sri Lanka's sovereignty and the fundamental rights of its citizens, will be repealed and replaced with legislation more in keeping with our national interest. He further stated that all members of the delegation representing the government in Geneva should clearly understand that anything short of the above will effectively be a betrayal of the people of Sri Lanka. Meanwhile, United National Party Parliamentarian Field Marshal Sarat Fonseca is of the view that the leaders of the country should allow them to be punished to safeguard the image of uh, Sri Lanka armed forces. Speaking at the media following a function in Colombo, uh, he reiterated that several persons who were in the armed forces engaged in illegal activities following the war. <laughs> ඒ වැඩියෙන්ම කළා තියෙන්නේ යුද්ධය ඉවර වුණාට පස්සේ යුද්ධය යනකොට මම මේ වගේ රණ්ඩිත තිබ්බේ නැහැ රටේ තියෙන නීතියෙන් රටේ ඉන්න නායකයෝ මැදිහත් වෙලා 
වැඩි කරපු වැඩ දඬුවම් දෙන්න ඕනේ. ඒක සජ්ජ ජාතිකේ සංවිධානය කියන්නේ මේ ලෝකයේ හොල්ලන සංවිධානය. හතරපස් දෙනෙක් වැඩි කරපු වැඩ දඬුවම් කරන්නේ නැති හින්දා මුළු හමුදාවටම අප කීර්තියක් ඇවිල්ලා තියෙනවා. දැන් කරන්නා කොට ළමයි එකලොස් දෙන්නේ මරපු එකකට සම්බන්ධයි කියලා සාක්කි තියෙනවා CID එක නඩු දාන්න ලෑස්ති. එතකොට ඒක එක එක අංශ වලින් නවත් වෙනවා නම්. එතකොට කොහොම සාධාරණ ඉෂ්ට වෙන්නේ. එතකොට මේ මැරිච්ච දරුවන්ගේ දෙමෝපියට සාධාරණයක් ඉෂ්ට වෙන්න ඕන නැද්ද? කරන්නා කොට විතර සාධාරණ ඉෂ්ට වෙන්න ඕනේ. As we know the issue of who should be named as the presidential candidate has been a pressing subject for several political parties including the SFP. Now it is in this backdrop the opposition leader Mahindra Rajapaksha uh, expressed confidence that only one candidate from the party can ensure the uh, winning during the upcoming presidential election. Leader of the opposition Mahindra Rajapaksha unveiled the pinnacle of the Bodhirukka Rama Vihara temple in Aranayaka today. मट उदय वैसी मट आराधना करी ना मामा हाथ पुहीं द या व्यूर्त करा व्यूर्त कर पुहीं द मामा आवा जाना दे दिया पढ़ी 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 अपने ना एक के ना ही नीना ने आप एक सीखिया Meanwhile, the presidential candidate representing the UNP also became a main topic in the political arena today. UNP parliamentarian Field Marshal Sarath Fonseca says that leader of the UNP, Prime Minister Ran Vikram Singh, must contest for the upcoming presidential election. While UNP MP Hesha Vitanagi went on to say that the party will bring a new candidate whose name will be revealed in due time. Magi ane paksha naaye kya chandi illando ne? Pudhu apeksha ki or ne? Abhi naaye kya dinu ane vada karno? Aulai kya thay dekham be? नायकत्व इन्होंने अनिवार्य जनाधिपति ने इधर पत्ते इन्होंने रुग्णा मात्र निवेश के मुसीम में तुम आगे एक अमाती के तीन दुआ करने में पक्षे जागरणे करने पुलांग आप एक सके किधर पत्ते करने आके न माते इन्होंने हर ये टा नमनों की वटर आटे जनता वाकी पापुए इन्होंने नायक मेरा टे जनाधिपति वरि� when attracting foreign investments. The former Defence Secretary expressed these views while addressing a null seminar organised by the Elia organisation in Badulla today. Api vivasaya kyan dirigan manna toon. Merate tibina karmanta vyapara karagane anata puluan nam. Ay api eveni vyapara pitarata vivasaya kyan labadi. Api pitarata ayojake merata ta genna manna nam. आयोजक अभिषिं अपेराटट विदेश विनी में नित्रुव म लबादेन टोन यम किसी रैकिया प्रमाणिया उत्पादने कराने टोन ये वागे म इम थाक्षने अपेराटट मारु कराने टो अपे आर्थिक अपे यह लट गिन्यानट नाम ये विदेश आयोजन अपे लबागाते युत्ते यम यम सीमा मान तुलाए अपे स्थिर प्रतिपात्ति तीन न टोन अमतिवरु मारुवेन कोट राज्यान मारुवेन कोट प्रतिपात्ति वेनस वेनवनाम अपे देशियो हो वेवा विदेशियो हो वेवा आयोजक के न आयोजने कराने ने अभी मैं अभी होगा बार गन अभी इधर ये दी मैं राठा संवर दिता राठा बावड़ पातकीरी मट अभी तह किया वाले बेवाई प्रातने करना Minister of Health, Nutrition and Indigenous Medicine Dr. Raj Dasena Ratna says that indication of sugar, salt and fat levels in food items including biscuits uh, via colour codes will be made compulsory from the beginning of next month. Addressing a media briefing held at the Government Information Department today, the Minister went on to say that over 82% of Sri Lankans die due to non-communicable diseases caused by these three ingredients. In a bid to control non-communicable diseases like diabetes, the ministry has taken a decision to measure the use of fat, sugar and salt by a colour-coded system on confectionery, solid and semi-solid food including biscuits in addition to carbonated drinks. Accordingly, colour codes indicating if there is high, medium or low content in sugar, fat or salt should be indicated on all packaging with effect from the 2nd of April this year. Speaking at a media briefing today, the Ministry of Health highlighted that sugar levels in 100 grams of confectionery, which includes biscuits exceeding 22 grams, should indicate the colour red. 
If sugar levels are between 8 grams and 22 grams, the color code should be amber, while the use of below 8 grams of sugar should be indicated in green color. If the level of salt exceeds 1.25 grams in any 100 grams of sweets, it should be indicated in red. If it is between 0.25 grams and 1.25 grams, the color amber should be used. If the level of salt is below 0.25 grams, it should be mentioned in green color. When it comes to fat content, if the amount of fat is above 17.5 grams in any 100 grams of confectionery or biscuits, it should be coded in red, while fat levels between 3 grams and 17.5 grams should be indicated in amber. If fat levels are below 3 grams, the code will be green color. Varna Sanketa Krame Rasaka Believerta, Api April Masi, Devani Daidala, Megani Tiak Bata Patkarno, Gasset Kala, E Varna Sanketa Valing Idri Patkarnova, then Penny Beamer Tapi Idri Patkare, Tini Vitra. Make Api Idri Patkarna, Sini Pamanak Navi, Sini, Lunu, Saha Media, E Varna Sanketa Val, Samala, Sini Vadinang, Eka Ratu, Sama Nimatamakiranang Ape Matang Matamatanua, Eka Kaha, Ta Dunang Ape Pramanetavada, Eka Kolavino, Basa, Trituema, Tibeno, Sini, Lunu. Made a coacher at Angu de Gratero. Ape Rate, Rohalvela Miana, San Cavan, Sietasu, Decac Miane, Mebo no on a rogue. The Department of Meteorology issued a red alert for western Sabaragamo, northwestern Uva, and central provinces, as well as the districts of Gaul and Matra today. The warning will be in effect for nine hours until midnight. The Department of Meteorology issued a red alert indicating heavy rainfall and severe thunderstorms for provinces of Western, Sabaragamua, Northwestern, Uwa and Central, as well as Gaul and Mathara districts today. Heavy falls of about 100 mm accompanied by strong winds of up to 70 to 80 km per hour forecast during thunder showers. The Department of Meteorology advised the public to seek shelter indoors, avoid open areas such as paddy fields, tea plantations and use of wired telephones and connected electric appliances during thunderstorms. All who are in the hilly area has to be very vigilant with that uh, prevailing conditions. Rain and the strong winds could be expected. So winds uh, more than 70 to 80 kilometers per hour could be expected. So 117 call center number is completely updated with all of the info information. So all the district disaster management units and uh, forces military being uh, updated with all of the information. People need to be very vigilant with that prevailing situations as uh, heavy rain and strong winds could be expected in western and and Northwestern Province, Central and Sabaragamu Province and Kalmatha Districts. Sri Lanka Police today stated that 26 high-ranking police officers, including two senior superintendents of police, have been transferred. With the approval of the National Police Commission, the transfers have been made based on the need for service. Among the recipients of transfers are two senior superintendents of police, five superintendents of police, and four assistant superintendents of police. In addition, three chief inspectors of police acting as OICs and two inspectors of police have also been granted transfers. The usage of the Katunagi Airport to transport goods for US warships docked in regional seas became a much talked about topic during the recent past. Other than it received the opportunity to pay a visit to the United States nuclear-powered warship USS John C. Stennis, which is equipped with helicopters and radar systems. The nuclear-powered USS John C. Stennis was contracted on 29 March 1988 and the ship was christened on the 11th of November 1993 in honour of US Senator John Cornelius Stennis, who served in the Senate from 1947 to 1989. John C. Stennis boasts a top speed in excess of 30 knots and the ship can travel 1 million miles without fuel. The air wing can engage enemy aircraft, submarines and land targets or lay mines hundreds of miles from the ship. John C. Stennis's aircraft are used to conduct strikes, support land battles, protect the battle group or other friendly shipping and implement a sea or air blockade. The ship spans across an area of 4.5 acres and has a 1,092 feet long and 257 feet wide runway. The ship reaches a height of 244 feet and could carry 6,500 people at once. Adhaderana received an opportunity to pay a visit to this nuclear-powered supercarrier. 
The ship is equipped with helicopters and radar systems. It also has 21 missiles and uses infrared rays to detect possible missile attacks. Bandarnaka International Airport provided necessary services the ship required during the recent past. According to the U.S. Embassy in Colombo, Sri Lanka received 25 million rupees in January through these missions. The sixth batch of devotees who won the privilege to participate in the Dambadiva Vandana pilgrimage organized by FM Derana and Derana Media Network arrived at the birthplace of Siddhartha Gautama, which is situated in Lumbini, Nepal today. Now tomorrow the devotees will get the opportunity to pay homage to the sacred monastery of Jetavanarama, a temple where the Lord Buddha resi resided for most part of his life. <laughs> well, we have the forecast of how the market and stock market will perform over the coming weeks. So make sure you stay tuned for that. You are watching Sri Lanka's number one news channel. This is Other Therana 24. Market analysts forecast buying interests by local institutions are likely to improve, coupled by a consolidation to take place in the Kramo boost following the heavy dip in the market. During the week, the Osha price index lost 1.85%, while the S&P 20 decreased by 3.44%. We now have Dimant Matthew from First Capital Holdings with this week's market forecast. In the bond market, uh, with the prevailing flat yield curve, we expect some selling pressure in the mid to long tenor, pushing the yields up slightly. Pressure will be more towards the longer tenor maturities. In the equity market, we expect uh, with the heavy dip in the market, we accept some uh, consolidation at the current levels, uh, while some buying interest uh, by local institutional funds are also likely. We also expect some foreign interest to be prevalent uh, with the attractive valuations uh, prevailing in the market, as the foreign fund flow is also reversed back to emerging and frontier markets. A study by a team of economists at leading American universities published this week showed President Donald Trump's uh, trade battles cost the U.S. economy 7.8 billion U.S. dollar in lost gross domestic product in 2018. Authors of the paper say they analyzed the short-run impact of Trump's actions and found that imports from targeted countries declined 31.5 percent, while targeted U.S. exporters exports fell by 11 percent. They also found that annual consumer and producers losses from higher costs of imports totaled 68.8 billion US dollars. The study was authored by a team of economists at the University of California Berkeley, Columbia University, Yale University and University of California at Los Angeles and published by the National Bureau of Economic Research. Now, in the developing news, uh, New Zealand authorities are racing to identify the 50 people killed in a massacre at two mosques so that their families can bury them in accordance with Muslim tradition. In addition to the people killed in the attack on Friday, an additional 50 others were wounded in the shootings. Of the injured victims, 34 remain in Christchurch Hospital, including 12 in intensive care. Prime Minister Jacinda Ardern said today that authorities had started returning identified bodies to families and all bodies will be returned by Wednesday. Six disaster victim identification experts have travelled from Australia to help hasten the process. New Zealand police described efforts to identify the victims as detailed and complex work that must be completed thoroughly. Meanwhile, Facebook INC said it removed 1.5 million videos globally of the New Zealand mosque attack in the first 24 hours after the attack. The company said it is also removing all edited versions of the video that do not show graphic content out of respect for the people affected by the mosque shooting and the concerns of local authorities. New Zealand Prime Minister Jacinda Ardern has said she wants to discuss live streaming with Facebook.
Meanwhile, flash floods and landslides triggered by torrential rain in Indonesia's easternmost part province of Papua have killed at least 58 people, injured dozens and displaced more than 4,000. A search for more possible victims was underway in the town of Sentani, where 51 people were killed and 74 injured. Heavy rain also caused landslides in the nearby provincial capital of Jayapura. About 4,150 people are sheltering in the six evacuation centres in Jayapura, where the death toll is expected to rise. Disaster authorities have warned local governments of flash flood risks due to deforestation in the mountains surrounding the town. On a separate note, search and rescue of efforts are underway for 40 foreign and domestic tourists who are believed to be trapped after landslide hit a waterfall site on Indonesia's tourist island of Lombok today. Two moderate earthquakes struck Lombok, triggering the landslides in the area, which resulted in the deaths of two individuals. Well, we are going for a short commercial break now, so make sure you stay tuned for some sports news on the other side. You are watching Sri Lanka's number one news channel. This is Other Therana 24. And with that, we conclude this edition of First at 9 for tonight. But before we leave you, we'd like to remind our viewers that Showbiz Tonight is up next with uh, our very own Mahish Johnny. So make sure you stay tuned for that as we bring you more on the latest of the world of entertainment. Thank you for joining us and have a pleasant evening.